So now my question proper, since we're, you're a little short on time, want to make sure we're getting to the, the big questions. Uh, Hell yeah. Fantasy High is the third installment of like this meta coming of age story for both like the characters in the story, but also for like Dimension 20 and Dropout, but also for the actual play medium as a whole. You're at the forefront of developing this medium as like a respected artistic medium. How has your understanding of what actual play is evolved since you started Fantasy High? And how does that change in where you're at now impact the way you run games? Wow. Rowan, you are really good at this. Um, that's an <laughs> incredible, you. it's incredible, straight up incredible question. It's such a wild thing. So the old improv teacher part of me would probably characterize this as a lot of the most important parts of your education, which is what this all is, right? Like all growth, you know, all growth artistically is training and teaching yourself. How do I do this better? Mm -hmm. And the most important parts of education, I think, tend to happen as your conscious mind sort of dredges into your unconscious and trains the parts of yourself that are subconscious. Remember, the last conversation we had was about, was about Mentopolis and mm -hmm. immediately going to this kind of the relationship between the conscious and the, and the unconscious mind. Probably the most important ways that I've developed as a producer, as a content creator, as a artist, or as a storyteller, have all happened subconsciously, right? Like that growth, and I think that's true probably across different mediums, right? Your most important growth is about honing the parts of yourself that are active when you're not focusing on them. Mm -hmm. um, I think that in terms of what has changed consciously, the first season of Fantasy High was made, went into pre-production, some short weeks after I found out that I even had a job, right? Like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're talking about a, and it was all untested, right? So like Dimension 20 didn't, I think the things that have changed somewhat are like now when we make a season of Dimension 20, we're making a season of internet actual play show Dimension 20. Whereas mm -hmm. before, in fantasy high, it, you know, in freshman year, you're just making, you're, you're trying something new. Like this was happening while, you know, four other shows were going into production at Dropout hadn't launched yet, right? Mm -hmm. It was a very different world. I think in terms of how I've changed or what I tend to, like, what is it that I focus on for this? Weirdly, a lot of my focus goes to protecting things from changing. There's a weird goal Ooh, to have. Especially for you, yeah. And what I mean by that is the crew of technicians and producers and artists are the largest and most capable it has ever been. Mm. The intrepid heroes, you know, no one's jumping on tables anymore, right? We have stone cold actual play killers, right? Mm -hmm. This is a murderer's row. <laughs> uh, we walk into a dome that is bolted to the floor because Dimension 20 produces so many episodes a year that it has its own dedicated set at the Dropout mm -hmm. Studios. And we know that when we make this, right, um, the majority of Fantasy High fans uh, didn't even watch the first season live because the platform and the show have grown so much. Mm -hmm. My job is to forget all of them when I sit in the chair and to, to try to find something primal and eternal that doesn't change, which is I want to tell a story with my friends mm -hmm. and I want to talk about something that feels real and it feels true. And weirdly, I think that part of why the growth has to happen subconsciously is because the mission is so primal and uh, human. Mm 
right? Mm. It hasn't changed from freshman year. We've gotten better at it. And hopefully our skills are more honed and we're working with more incredible artists and the crew is incredible. Carlos Luna is our series producer. Rick Perry's shop the, their arrows will blot out the sun. You got Shawbuck <laughs> with this mini shoot team, Kevin Stiller. Uh, uh, you got uh, Derek and Ruby, Kate Mayer artist. Like everything has leveled up and grown and grown and grown. So as you're leveling up, I think for me, the challenge is not like, um, the challenge is about protecting a mission that has always stayed the same, which is play without reservation with people you love and try to say something that's true. Mm, okay, I really love that. And with all of this then, what do you think is... Let me back up a second. If you were explaining actual play to an audience that had never experienced actual play or TTRPGs, what is your definition as one of these like figureheads of the media? What? In, uh, absolutely wild to be considered uh, uh, a figurehead of anything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, what I would describe actual play as, right, is actual play is a genre of show. It is a show, right? Fun to, and even that is already putting me on one side of a, of a line. Mm -hmm. Actual play is a show, right? You, you know, we didn't stumble into a room with cameras and say, this seems like a good place to play D and D right. Cameras are there on purpose. <laughs> um, uh, and the actual play is a type of show, which is making two shows at the same time. It is making a piece of genre fiction more often than not fantasy, sci-fi, something along those lines. Uh, and that show that you're creating is being supported mechanically by a, a tabletop role-playing game that adds an element of chance and amazement and wonder and cleverness to support another show, which is a reality show about a group of people playing a game together. And the alpha and beta wave <laughs> of the reality show with the epic fantasy show um, it tickles some weird place in people's brains that make them watch what is fundamentally seven people at a table talking. And, right? So true. Uh, uh, but it's, you know, I say that, but then also the most incredible miniatures and sets and graphics. And there's a lot of amazing, you know, extravaganza, spectacular, spectacular kind of happening within that. But that core thing of like, if you pitched it like, hey, do you want to watch a like premium cable, single camera, incredibly produced, high budget, whatever, or do you want to watch something that is is you know eighty to ninety percent these people at a table talking? The thing that I think makes so many people go, yeah, let me get that second one, is the genuine amazement, the authenticity of the interplay between we are improvisers or voice actors or storytellers that are really good at telling a story that because we're playing a game to tell that story, the game is throwing wrenches and surprises at us. So, you you know, like the idea of you're sitting down to watch, I don't know, you know, you're sitting down to watch like Romeo and Juliet and off stage William Shakespeare goes, what? Oh my God. <laughs> and you're like, that's a weird, it's a weird vibe, right? To watch, mm -hmm. uh, not to compare anybody specifically to but that, that idea of, of, you know, you're hopefully it's a bizarre element of I'm falling in love with a story and I'm watching the storytellers love the story too. And I'm watching them not know how it's going to end. Absolutely. I hear the influence of Dr. Friedman in your answer and really enjoy that. Doc, we gotta salute the doc, absolutely. I, I love her so much. She's incredible, a great colleague. Um, I, I wanna respect your time and make sure that we're getting here. Um, mm -hmm. My final two questions, what do you hope for the future of the medium? Where do you wanna take this medium? You know, as you advance the production of actual play every single season, especially starting with Metopolis. And now we have Carlos Luna, who is like talking a big game, saying this is going to be the best actual play season of all time. I and want to believe that. I totally can see it happening. 
Where uh, do you think the future of the medium is headed? Where do I think it is headed? Um, I feel like actual play is... That's a great question. It's a wild thing because you're, in a lot of ways, Ron, I'm like a very... Um, I have a kind of almost... I don't want to say Luddite, but there's a mentality a little bit of, especially like, I feel like I've had a lot of conversations with uh, uh, Sam Reich, mm -hmm. who's an incredible visionary in terms of, you know, format and playing with something. And Sam, you know, has a show where literally the format changes every time, right? Um, now, Game Changer is also uh, uh, the stress of changing the format every single time. I mean, my God, the amount of work he puts into that show is titanic. Um, and there's a part of me that, like my earlier answer, I think I stay very, mm. try to stay very grounded in the fact that the format and the medium and things level up and they go and they change. But also, I think I try to find the commonality in actual play, actual play to comic books, to movies, to TV, to being at a fire with your friend telling a story. And I think what ends up fascinating me is not the things that divide these media, but actually the things that unite them and what remains the same across all of them. And so in a weird way, when I'm asked questions about the future, I uh, am born ceaselessly back into the past where I go, actually, I don't know that I'm that different from some old Nordic scald going, hark and listen, right? This is kind of something beautiful to me is the passing of the torch through these traditions, through these storytime mm. traditions. And in some ways, actual play is almost a return to something very primal, shared community storytelling where we have a mythology that is ours that we are sharing and, and delineating and telling and exploring and gasping at, and it is co community building. Like there's something, the, the secrets of actual play to me are kind of in the past as much as they are in the future. All of which is to say, where do I see actual play going? Well, I'll tell you what, if you told me seven years ago I was going to be professional DM, I would have said, that's a very mean joke to tell you. <laughs> um, that is, <laughs> that's really rude of you. So I am not good at predicting the future and I do not claim to be. In terms of where I want it to go, I want as many people as possible to find a home in this medium. And I want voices that have not been heard to be heard. I want stories that have not been told to be told. Uh, I want there to be, like in a perfect world, right? Uh, this medium would provide a home for so many people because I think that there are entryways for new stories within this medium that can be more challenging to find a home elsewhere. Uh, and so the more people that can find a way to be here, the better. Um, which is, you know, uh, that's a lot of words for me to basically say, like to the degree that I am in this industry and to the degree that I can speak to actual play, all I want is for as many people that can be here to be here because it's been really, uh, it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me career wise and, and, and artistically. So of course I would want as many people as possible to feel that same way. That's a beautiful answer. Um, just because this is my main beat, I highly recommend you check out uh, Goodia by Nameless Domain. It's a two shot uh, using the Bluebeard's Bride system. Really, Ooh. really beautiful story. Highly recommend you check it out. Wait, I'm gonna actually write this down. Hold on. The beep, do, 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 uh, uh, how do you spell it? G-U-D-I-Y-A. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Uh, hell yeah. And the same final question as I had during our last interview, what is the thesis statement for this season of Fantasy High or Fantasy High in general as like a piece of art that you're giving to? I will, I will say this, because I don't want to give any spoilers, but what I will say is this. Um, coming back to junior year, uh, I feel like we're exploring 
different themes than we explored in earlier seasons of the show. And a lot of it has to do with, uh, so I never went to high school. Oops. Mm -hmm. And so love that I had to, I love that for, I love, Hey, I love that for me too. <laughs> um, uh, what I ended up doing was asking uh, friends and collaborators what their experiences of their junior year of high school were. And that was a big part of the creative process. So a lot of this was a polling of different friends and collaborators. And I said, how did junior year differ from your freshman and sophomore year? And the answers I got did a lot to inform uh, some of the choices I made in constructing the world of this season of Fantasy High. Amazing. I love that. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Uh, I know you have a thousand other interviews to do, so I will let you get to them. Happy, happy birthday. And... Thank you, Rowan. Of course. Uh, you're the best. These questions rule. You're awesome. Thank you so, so much.